breakfast. Good call. Uncle Jim sorry for the uh, crappy uh, clip but it only came in 280p and I did it off the iPad all right anyway the other night I was watching the mo movie bullet uh, Steve McQueen 1968 and I forgot that he had this he used this holster this type of holster and it was very popular in the 60s and 70s. Detectives, police, um, you could put it right under your coat. You'd never know it. You don't even feel it. And they're very good uh, summertime if you don't want to carry pocket or in the waistband. And uh, you can just wear like a Hawaiian shirt unbuttoned and you'll never see it. And it's great for driving and everything because it's right there, right now. So, um, anyway, I thought I'd talk about this holster because I saw the movie the other night. It's like, I'll be damned. I have one or two of these, maybe just one. I don't know. I got to dig. But um, it's a really neat holster, and I always loved it. Now, this one is for a J-Frame Smith & Wesson. And in the movie, he used, let's make sure we're focused here. In the movie, he used a Diamondback Colt, which is like a mini python snub, in 38 Special. And then it had it was fitted to uh, Colt Detective Grips, which were uh, a little different. So there's a side note there. And we all love Steve McQueen, and we all love Bullet. So uh, but I, I said, I got to do this video after watching the, uh, the movie. So here is the same type holster. This one's a Safari Land number 19, and it's made for the Smith & Wesson J-Frames. And if you have an air weight, you're never going to feel it on you. And it hides so good under a unbuttoned shirt in the summertime. All right, so uh, how this works is you got a leather strap for your shoulder, and then you just got this... Uh, I don't know, stretchy type uh, material uh, for the rest of you. And it's kind of a mess right now. As a matter of fact, this is one of my old holsters. As a matter of fact, it's got blood on it. <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> All right. So anyway, if you have a little J-frame or I guess the, they made them for other guns, but the J-frame is what this was mainly made for. Um, this is a nice holster to have if you're not pocket carrier in the waistband. This is another choice, and it is so damn comfortable. There's no straps, there's no nothing, and that's the odd part about this. It uses an elastic band here uh, to friction fit the gun in, and it locks in around the cylinder and the back of the gun. It's molded for it. Uh, you can see there, and you would, and it's upside down, and you would think, oh, that's going to fall out. There's no way it's falling out. So what you do is you have this, and your gun is upside down, kind of like canted about like this. And all you do is you grab your gun and lift up and pull out. It's it's a natural motion, and there's no hitches or glitches. It's just boom, and it comes right out. Other than that, it stays in there because of this. I think it was ingenious, uh, whoever designed this. And it was super popular in the 60s and 70s, like I said, with detectives, cops, everything. 
So it's super deep carry. Uh, you'll never notice it, no matter what you're wearing. Unless you just have a t-shirt, then obviously you can't cover it. So I might, I, I don't have a J-Frame Smith anymore. I used to carry one a long time ago. Um, and I might, if I find a used one, a beat up cheap used one, a pre-lock, I might buy one just so I can carry it in this holster again. So, um, now I carry an airweight, uh, a lightweight uh, Ruger, which is super lightweight, and it's not really made for this, but it will kind of fit just so I can show you how it works. So, uh, you stick your gun in here, and then it kind of goes up, and it uh, friction fits off the trigger guard and the elastic, and then it's molded around your cylinder and the back of the gun, and it will not come out. You can do whatever you want. I used to carry this. You can, you can yank the hell out of this, and then to uh, deploy it, you just pull it out like that. Super easy, okay? So... That's all there is to it. So I was watching Bullet, and I said, Steve, you knew what you were doing, or at least whoever, uh, uh, you know, picked his gun and everything, and uh, this holster is awesome. So next time you watch the movie, check it out. Now, he had, he had a uh, extra strap on here for extra bullets, which I thought was really cool. I never had one of those. Uh, it's like a speed strip he had that went on the side here, and I just thought this was uh, super cool. Um, so anyway, there you go. There's the bullet holster. I thought I'd share that with you. I dug that out of the holster bin, and my gosh, uh, maybe I need a little, a little J-frame, but I like the Ruger better, so maybe I'll get one anyway. Maybe an air weight or something. Until next time, I hope you found that interesting. And again, this particular one was the Safari Land number 19. And this is probably back from the 70s. All right. And I used it a lot. So there you go. As a side note, the Bullet Mustangs, there were two. One was used for stunts. And the other one, uh, Steve McQueen drove. And it was kind of beat up. The stunt one was, I believe, was found in a junkyard in Mexico, and it was pretty trashed. The other one was bought on a regular ad, and the uh, gentleman that bought that uh, gave it to his kids, and they drove it as a daily driver. Steve McQueen wanted to buy it back from the original gentleman that gave it to his kids, and he wouldn't sell it. Uh, a couple years ago, that Mustang, in beat-up condition, original condition, sold for $3.4 million on the auction. And that is charisma. Steve McQueen looked like a regular dude, but he had it. He had charisma. And so, charisma goes a long way. So there's that. Until next time, thanks for watching.